Hi, welcome on another one of our videos. Today I'm going to show you how to change the ball valve in a push button system. I'm sure plenty of you have got these. So, take the lid off. Usually if it's this type, it'll just ping off like so. There are some different ones where you have to take this out and undo a screw. That's a different model. Uh, you may have that model where this has to be lifted out first. There's a screw underneath, undo it, and then the lid will come off. If you've got that type, um, it's just slightly different, that's all. This type, you just pull away. It's got two push buttons there. You can see where we pushed it so much, the rubber started to wear away on the push rod. It just pushes on these two things here which is the actual flush mechanism. Okay, take the lid away. So, here is our valve, and this is it. It will either be a fluid master, a type like this, or it will be something like a Torbeck. Sometimes there's a short little stubby valve in there, uh, a different make altogether. I've seen a few odd bods, but in the main, it's usually a fluid master like this. So we're gonna change it for another one. Now, I actually haven't got anything wrong with my valve. <laughs> I'm just doing this job to show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to take mine out and, and literally just put it back in again as if it was a new one. Okay, so it's, it's just to help you guys out who are having trouble fitting these in and knowing the correct order to do them in. Okay, so the first thing is to turn the water off first. Now, one thing you can see, this is a bottom entry ball valve. Okay, so by that we mean obviously the supply goes up into the bottom of the system uh, to feed the ball valve. Yours may be a side entry one. If it's a side entry, it will come in the left hand side normally. Uh, same situation, same sort of thing to renew the valve. But on this particular one, we're going to renew this bottom entry valve. So, you may have a valve like this, if you haven't, then you're going to have to turn it off at the mains, okay? Uh, there's no other option, but if you've got one of these, straight screwdriver in the slot and turn like so. When it's a crossways like that, the water is now off. When it's in that position, you're safe to go, all right? So just flush the system, let's get the water out of it. Now, as you can see, torch on there and if it's worse or better or, or not but there's water left in the bottom now before you go undoing this valve we've got to get that water out because once you do undo the valve uh, and go to put it out all that lot will drop out onto the floor it's all the right mess so it's down now to some old rags and cloths as much as you can to get that water right out of the bottom of the system okay so we're going to do that next there we have it all mopped out and so we should get very little now out when we undo the union. There'll be a little bit that's in the pipe, but that's general anyway. We've put a bit of cloth on the floor, which I think would still be advisable. Okay, when you do it, we'll put a little bit of old towel down there. Do the same. It won't be much, but it's worth having it there. Okay, and we're going to proceed to undo it now. So, I'm going to proceed with undoing the union up there. There it is there. Best to have something nice and small, short spanner like this. I, I prefer because it does sort of get in the gap easier. And you're going to undo it anti-clockwise, hold the banner on and just give it a little turn. It should come undone easily because it is just a plastic valve and they never tightened up that tight. Once you get going, you should be able to do it by hand. I've got a flexi as you can see on mine. Many of them will have flexes. Now you can see the water coming out of there now. That's the little bit between there that's in the valve. Okay, don't worry about it, we'll ease off, that's why we've got a towel on the floor there, just to catch any little bit left in the valve there. Put it right and done, then we can just pull it away like so. Okay, you can see the little ceiling washer inside there as well, that's used to seal the joint there. Okay, now we're going to proceed with undoing the actual valve itself. So now the toughest part, getting the nut undone. Again, that's why we like a little spanner on here. We can get a little short one on there. We can get on that nut there and get it undone. Let's see if we can get it on. That feels like about it, yep. I've got to turn it. If not, you might there are several other different spanner types that will fit on there. That's, but that's just good, I think. Yeah, feels like it's gone. Yeah, it's a little bit more. And you should be able to undo it by right hand then, if it gets so far. A little spanner like this is invaluable for this type of work. Where you can get right in. Short little bit of travel, that's it. So I'm done by my fingers now. So, spin it right out. 
and that's gone down behind the back of the pan probably, as <laughs> usually they do. Okay, and then once we've got to there, we can pull it out now. So I'm gonna pull the valve out. You can come to the top here, and we'll show it coming out the system. If you'd like to come over the camera, Jan. My able cameraman today, Jan on the camera. Okay, so it should just pull out like that. And there we have it. One valve removed. Okay, so as we know, um, I'm just going to put this valve back because I haven't got anything wrong with it, actually it's quite fine. Uh, but we're saying that yours has gone in and you're going to put another one back. So there's different types you can buy. Um, I'm just putting this one back, there's several out there. Um, do have a look, I'll put a couple of links on for the ones that I like, which is probably a Fluid Master back actually. Um, but there are the Torbeck valves, which are supposed to be slightly better, better quality. Um, I'll put a link so you can buy any of those if you want through my Amazon link. Okay, other than that, once again, if you get one of these, you should have that little restrictor in there, the filter. If it's going on the mains, leave it in there, it will be in there. If it's going on a tank fed system, a tank in the loft, get the pliers on there and just pull it out. Um, I'll find it better, it runs better, it has more flow with that filter out if you're using it on a tank fed system. But when you get it at first, you won't realise you might put that in. Uh, and it will slow it down if it's off a tank in the loft, all right? But that's all you've got to know. Make sure you put your new washer on. Obviously, I've still got my old one on. And the other one, one thing to make sure is that when you look into the system down there where the hole is, that there's no debris around this hole. Make sure it's all nice and clean, it, so it's got a nice sound surface to go on. If there's any debris there uh, against the washer, it will leak, okay? So make sure that's nice and clean. Other than that, we can start inserting it back and getting the back nut on. So, it's nice and clean. In the hole we go. Hold it there, on the position you want it in. Okay, Does you it matter? It no, you can have it on any position around there. You can go that way, that way, or whatever, whichever way you like. As long as it's uh, clear to move, say so this little piston just moves up and down, and that's all there is to it. It's just that little bit there, can you see it? Just goes yeah. up and down, so you can have it whatever you want, basically. Um, all you've got to do is maybe hold it with one hand while we get the nut up with the other. So we get the back nut on now. So there's the thread of the, the valve there. We're going to do it up by hand, obviously, at first. Make sure it's nice and square, don't cross thread it. Just spin it up with your fingers. As tight as you can get it, hand tight first of all. And you're holding the top. Holding it the top with my right hand, okay, the position I want it in. I want it there, not that it matters. Uh, it'll go there. Okay, get it nice and tight, and it's just a matter of tightening it up with the spanner again, okay, like we did before when we undid it. Um, just tighten that up there. It's awkward, I know, but that's plumbing for you. Always awkward. Not just the plumbing that's awkward, it's the photography as well. I'm in the yeah. bath here. Yeah? That is true. <laughs> so it's can use different sorts of spanners, these are quite good as well. Golden grips, if you find it a trouble getting the spanner on, sometimes it can be. Um, you can use different type of grips to get in there, get on there like that. Again, better, can be worse. Oh, the hat's coming. <laughs> Come on. That's actually a little bit better doing it up than that spanner. So, there we are. Why you did are. you use that one? These are really handy, as you see they were actually a little bit better at getting in there to get that nut up. Very handy tool. I've got links to buy these tools in my tool section. Uh, and very handy too. So that leaves us with the pipe union. Make sure your washer's still in there, hasn't come off. Okay, if you're using pipe with a swivel on it, make sure that fibre washer's still in there, hasn't come off. In fact, with the pipe, maybe it might be better to renew the fibre washer. And again, make sure this goes up nice and square. Okay, it's got very important about square. And you'll feel if it's going up square because you'll be able to turn it lots of turns. If it's going on square, you'll find you can only do it at half a turn. You're still holding stick. the top at the same time. I'm holding the top at the same time. Okay. Just in case it will turn. If you can't tighten these up that much, they're only plastic and they'll break. Okay, that's it. We just tighten it up now. The job's going to be done. I like the spanner on the nuts rather than the. Yeah, we're talking when I'm doing up on that. 
can see. So how do you know how far to tighten it? Right, you'll feel it come to a stop. I can feel it there now. That's it. You know you're there. All right, you can feel the resistance and you think, that's about it. No need to go mad. When you feel that resistance, just give it a tad more and that's it. That's finished now. I can now turn the valve back on with a little valve on the bottom. And fill it back up again. There we go. Water's flowing in. And no leaks. <laughs> And no leaks, nice and dry. Check it with your hands, put your hand up there. Obviously wait till it's filled right up just to check the top nut isn't leaking. Should be okay though. I'm confident, I've done about a thousand of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're on now and filling. If you want to adjust your new valve, this is the adjuster. Okay, turn it anti-clockwise. Makes the system water lower. If you need more water in it, turn it clockwise. And it will increase the level. On this particular valve anyway okay so mine is actually about right uh usually about half an inch below the overflow how are we doing here now a little bit more maybe you can hear it going in because i've adjusted it a little bit more these systems need all the water they can get <laughs> they don't hold much water. just keep turning it clockwise that's it you can hear that's near the level now that's about it we're there so we've got a flush now Push your ball, tickety boo, check the joints on the bottom, make sure they're dry, and uh, that's the job. All done. So, that's it. How do we easily change the ball cock on one of these push button systems? A double A. <laughs> okay, all my stuff, you know where to go. Derek from 33. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.